I, I'm, I'm gonna start with uh, just something that I saw over this last weekend that relates to dream interpretation. I thought it would be really helpful. I was doing a, an advanced workshop on dreams and visions. And while I was there, one of the dreams that was shared was a, a dream that was very, very revealing about what was going on in someone's heart. It, it was an issue of grief. It was an issue of loss that, that they, were, they were trying to deal with. In the dream, um, they'd had a, a baby sister that had drowned and everybody was going on like everything was fine, but their heart was breaking. And, and while we were talking about it in the class, the, there were you know, people, well, what about this? And what if it's this? And what if it's this? And the dreamer was sitting there the whole time. And it was like we were taking her heart and just opening it up and looking around in it. And, and it felt so wrong. After we'd interpreted the dream, we were just trying to find little pieces and we weren't honoring her heart. And, and it just, it struck me at a different level what a precious gift that God gives us to be able to interpret dreams for people because sometimes they're, they're destiny dreams and they're exciting and sometimes it's, it's, it's a, um, a self-conditioned dream is talking about what's going on in the dream, but sometimes it's, it's that healing dream that just opens up the deep places of their heart and we need to realize when we are dealing with those kinds of issues, those kinds of dreams, so that we're sensitive with the person, that, that we're not being flippant with this revelation that is an intimate conversation between a dad and their child. And, 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 and if we can learn how to honor the revelation in that way, God will give us the ability, give us the opportunity to be able to, to speak into people's lives in, in key moments when they desperately need that healing word. We need to train ourselves to be sensitive to that. And so as, we, as we're pressing in and trying to understand dreams and trying to, to grow in our ability to interpret dreams, I, I, just that reminder of what it is that we're doing we're helping someone understand a conversation their dad is having with them. And some of those conversations are intimate conversations, and we need to treat them with honor and with respect. We need to honor the people that God is speaking to and not just let our excitement about revelation and our excitement about dreams steal that sense of holiness about the person and the God that's speaking to them when we're, when we're in that situation. So it, it just, it so struck me. I wanted to just say that because uh, a lot of times when we're, we're doing these dreams like here, we, we haven't run into those particular situations. But I, I think it was probably the second or third dream lab that we ever had. We, we had someone that had come to the dream lab and they shared a dream to be interpreted, and, and I realized this dream is all about the pain that they've gone through. I think it was like the last seven years. I, I knew at that time, I knew how long it had been. I can't remember now how long it had been. Uh, and, and I knew if we start talking about this dream, we're just gonna pull up all of that, all of that pain. And so I looked at the dreamer, I said, hey, you know, this dream is, is talking about the last seven years of your life. Do you really want us to interpret it right now? And she gets this really scared look on her face. She goes, no. I'm like, cool. We didn't get to interpret a dream for her, but later that night, I'm having a conversation with her and her friend. And being able to honor her in that way, she gave her life to the Lord. Because we actually honored her. And it would have been, there could have been all kinds of cool things. We could have learned about dreams and dream interpretation if we'd have unlocked that dream. But it just, it, it's, that's not that important. What's important is we're ministering God's heart to people. And we've got to keep that first in the midst of our, our pursuit of revelation and understanding a metaphor, and this might mean this, and these dynamics that come together, because it, it, it's, 
It's what we allow ourselves to, to do, what we allow ourselves to focus on, what we put in the forefront of our hearts will tell us what the Lord can entrust us with. And if we learn how to honor those situations, he'll put us in those situations more. And if we don't, we may get other situations, but we'll probably get less of those situations. But those are the situations that can change someone's life in an instant. It can, those moments when you have those sensitive dreams where they've just opened up that deep place, those are moments where you're speaking into the spirit of a person in a way that you don't often get to. And when we honor that, the potential is unbelievable. And when we don't honor that, we're not just hurting them, we're hurting him. Because his heart is connected to theirs. And he feels that pain with them. So, it's, a, it's kind of a serious comment, but it's, it's, it's a beautiful invitation that God has given us.